My dear Redemptress Confreys, my dear Redemptorine sisters, sisters associated with our Redemptress mission, my dear lay people, our collaborators, our associates, our lay missionaries, my dear friends, you're very welcome to the third day of reflection in preparation for the feast of St. John Neumann, our Redemptress Bishop and Saint. I'd like to reflect with you today on two further aspects of the spirituality of St. John Neumann. First, his absolute zeal for mission. And secondly, suffering and the role of suffering in the life of a missionary. The first, zeal. Zeal is an authentic virtue of any missionary. Let us listen to John Neumann himself. Zeal consists in the effort to detest, to flee from, to prevent or repel everything opposed to the will of God or the glory of his name. These words are taken from John Neumann's own personal diary. They speak to us of the essential attribute, virtue, that a missionary needs, zeal. To be zealous means to be burning, to be filled with enthusiasm and vigor for the mission. You see this in Jesus, burning with zeal to proclaim the kingdom of God. You see this in St. Paul, the missionary, on fire with the love of Jesus to proclaim that love to all. You see it in the life of John Neumann. As a young missionary priest in upstate New York, traveling on horseback, braving the elements, you see it as a redemptorist, preaching missions, working amongst migrant people, working in parish, zealous for the mission. You see it as a bishop, not satisfied staying in a luxurious palace, conducting administrative meetings, but no, going out, spending himself totally amongst his people, especially the marginalized and the poor. You could say John Neumann was on fire. On fire with the love of God to proclaim that love to people who needed to experience that love most. That's a big lesson for all of us. A redemptorist must always be a missionary, zealous, burning with enthusiasm and vigor to proclaim God's love. The second aspect is suffering. Once again, let us listen to John Neumann. John Neumann writes to his parents a letter 11th of February, 1836. He's about to set sail from France for the United States of America. He writes, The greater our sorrows now, the greater will be our joy hereafter. God would not impose such a sacrifice on us, did he not deem it salutary for us, and were he not willing to impart the necessary strength. Like many Catholics of the time, John Neumann believed that suffering was inevitable. In doing God's will, in living the mission, one has to embrace the cross. The cross is real. But one embraces the cross with strength from the crucified Lord, and one unites one's sufferings to the crucified Lord and finds grace and strength to face those sufferings. John Neumann had his own share of suffering. It was not easy for him to leave his family. It was not easy for him to find a bishop. It was not easy for him to travel through extreme weather of heat and winter. One of the most challenging aspects of his suffering was ridicule, scorn, contempt from Protestants 
who looked at the Catholic priest with scorn and derision. He faced that persecution. It was not easy for him to live a life alone. It was not easy for him to be a provincial, vice provincial superior. More importantly, when asked to be bishop, he panicked. But at that moment, he united his sufferings with the suffering of the Lord. And he drew strength from the passion of the Lord. Passion of Christ strengthened me was his Episcopal mortal, and he lived by that. The constant criticism he had to face as bishop for not dining with the mighty and the wealthy, the criticism that he was living too simple a life, the criticism that he was constantly with the poor and marginalized, that he was a weak bishop, weak because he was with the poor, that he spoke English with a strong German accent, he was often laughed at. But no matter what the suffering, John Neumann focused and drew strength from the passion of the Lord. And that strength enabled him, the little bishop, to give of himself totally to being at the service of the ones closest to the heart of the eternal shepherd. And so, my dear friends, and especially my dear Redemptress, Confres, the little bishop, John Neumann, teaches us an important lesson. The need for zeal in our lives as Redemptress missionaries today. The need to be enthusiastic, to be vigorous, to be on fire with the love of God, proclaiming that love of God especially to the weak, the marginalized, the struggling, the suffering, and the poor. Zeal for the mission. And secondly, for all of us, suffering is inevitable. None of us can say, my life is free of suffering. But when we embrace our suffering and unite our suffering, as John Neumann did, to the suffering of the Lord, the crucified Lord gives us the grace and strength necessary to bear our crosses, all for His glory. Let us seek the intercession of St. John Neumann. St. John Neumann, servant of God and man, your desire to bring all souls to Christ inspired you to leave your family, home and country. Ask for us the grace to live worthily in the spirit of our baptism, so that all our thoughts, words, and actions of every day will bring God our Father greater honor and glory. Ask for us the graces necessary to help and to serve the poor, the suffering, and the oppressed. May we live as you lived, persevering in every difficulty to know and to do God's holy will. In this life, May we share your intercession, the protection of Mary, and the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Prayer for the intercession of St. John Neumann. Merciful Father, you have given me all that I have in this life, even life itself. In all my daily needs, help me to remember the needs of others, too. Make me aware of the need to pray to you not just for myself, but also for the church, the Pope, the clergy, and people who suffer any need. Make me as selfless as St. John Neumann was. Throughout my life, give me the grace to direct my first thoughts to the service of you and others. Make my prayer, your will be done. Knowing that in your mercy and love, your will for me is my sanctification. I ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, 
and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. John Neumann, pray for us. Thank you.